It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Thanks for joining us, folks. I'm Sam LaSant. I want to read something to you, folks. Um, maybe you heard of this guy. His, cause, his name is Pope John Paul II. Uh, this is not only for Catholics, folks. This is for everyone. Pope John Paul II said, You are called to stand up for life to respect and defend the mystery of life always and everywhere, including the lives of unborn babies, giving real help and encouragement to mothers in difficult situations. Mothers in difficult situations. You are called to work and pray against abortion. Folks, you know I've been pro-life from day one, and I want to make this statement up front. I've always uh, welcomed uh, the um, pro-choice people to come on this show. Uh, Planned Parenthood, to tell their story, uh, my uh, stand is very simple. I am pro-life. Today, uh, we're going to talk about some of those things, okay? Uh, we all make mistakes in life, and this is not saying we told you so. This is uh, something to help you, uh, particularly with women, okay? The haven for women. Uh, I, found, uh, I found this to be extremely helpful uh, for women who are in crisis, particularly when they're considering abortion. You know, 50% of those women uh, who are in crisis will go to these centers. They will decide to have the babies. I have to tell you an interesting story. I'm on the show today is Jessica Frain, who is the director, and Maria Landu, who is a counselor. And we're going to bring a person on who had an abortion, and she'll tell her story. But it's an interesting. I did a show like this uh, about three, four years ago. I don't remember when, with Marianne Lahan and Don Gallade. And I think it was uh, Dr. Palador at the time. We showed uh, the partial birth abortion, which was absolutely so disgusting and pathetic. But anyway, uh, a while later, uh, I'm in the office, and um, <clears throat> this my secretary comes in and says, "There's a girl outside in the uh, waiting room, and she wants to talk to you. She has a baby, and she says you're responsible for that baby." Well, that's nothing you'd like to hear. And I'm like totally shocked. And now I'm, I'm walking out totally puzzled. And here's this nice girl holding a beautiful baby. <clears throat> and I said, how are you? She said, I'm fine. She said, Mr. LaSant, you're responsible for this baby. And I says, what do you mean by that? And she said, well, I saw your show on abortion. And I was scheduled to have an abortion the very next day. And I decided to go and talk to Marianne and this is my little baby. This is the thing that I was going to abort. Okay, so that is amazing to me, folks, to see what you, what you have. They were going to abort that beautiful, uh, God-giving child. Today, Jessica and um, uh, Maria will talk about the haven for women. And I urge you very much to support them. Uh, I'm going to put a phone number up there uh, for donations. Uh, I saw um, Mar Maria Landu in church. Uh, passing these little bottles out, asking people to fill them up with their change, and then they pick them up uh, just to help people who are in crisis. Until you're there, you don't know how important they are. So, uh, Jessica, an interesting story, isn't it? Yes, it is, and it's much needed in our community. <laughs> All right, tell me about the Haven for Women. Uh, well, the Haven for Women, we, we opened up about a year ago. It's, um, it's there for women facing unplanned pregnancies, and... Um, we help them. Our, our mission really, you know, our mission statement is when women are shown friendship, love, and support, they're better suited to show the same for their unborn baby. And um, we realize that it's a very difficult time in life for young girls um, when, you, when you're faced with an unplanned pregnancy and um, the media and everything around you is telling you that this is a choice rather than a life that's to be cherished and, and preserved and, and, and guarded. Um, it's very easy to to go with a decision maybe to have an abortion. Um, and that's why we're there. We're there to educate them, to give them the real facts, not to make them or force them into any decision, but to give them the real facts about what it's gonna be like to parent that child, what it's gonna be like to place the baby for adoption, and what it would be like if they chose abortion. Um, it's been my understanding that Planned Parenthood doesn't always give them the facts that they need to make a good decision. Um, I've heard from many women who opposed abortive that were told that that was just a blob of tissue, um, that it would, you know, once their physical recovery would be over, they can move on with their life, they could go forward with their dreams and go on to college and get married and have a great life, and it doesn't always turn out that way. In fact, it never turns out that way for a girl who's had an abortion. Um, so. it, it, is, it is amazing. Uh, 
how um, the liberal media, and I say that all the time, I get criticized, people send me nasty emails, you know, who do you think you are, this is my life and that stuff, and I understand that. But uh, when you're talking about a, you know, a God-given thing, okay, this child didn't ask to be in, to mm -hmm. be, you know, however there's a child there. And you have the elites, so to speak, who think it's only a blob, it's a tissue, etc. But conception, when it's conception, there's a, there's a baby there, okay, right. there's a little soul. Um, I was so happy to hear Brian Williams on NBC a couple of weeks ago. My wife and I are watching the news, and very seldom do I like to watch um, uh, the national news because they're all slanted. Uh, that's my opinion, but mm -hmm. I watched him. And he said uh, about a person who was pregnant, he says, and the, the poor little soul, he was referring to the baby. Uh, oh, wow. which was interesting that he would refer to a baby on national television when NBC is um, sort of like a liberal uh, a newscast, I think. That's my opinion. Um, uh, this is a touchy subject, uh, it Jessica. Is. It, very, it, it, it becomes a political thing, uh, and, and uh, you know, people scream at me um, telling me that, you know, you can't tell us what to do, and, you know, uh, the agenda, there's political agendas, uh, unfortunately, it has to. One of the parties, uh, the Democrat Party, is a political agenda, and abortion is part of that. Okay, and that's sad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that Democrats are bad. All right. But the point is that's that's the that's the sad thing here. Um, sure. What have you uh, What have you experienced um, in uh, the Heaven for Women so far? Uh, Some of your personal experience, what people coming in, when they come in, give me an example of a Jane Doe coming in, what's, what's her concern, what's her... Well, we, we, we get girls that come in all the way from the beginning when they're coming in just for, we offer free pregnancy testing, so we have girls that come in to take a free pregnancy test, all the way to girls that are nine months pregnant, about to give birth, or have just given birth and don't have anything for their baby. They don't have a car seat, they don't have clothes, diapers. Um, so we can, we handle those girls from the beginning to the end. Um, we hope to build relationships with them so that we can support them throughout their pregnancy which we've been able to do. Um, I can't touch too much on details just because all of the services that we offer are totally confidential. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we've, we've been there from the beginning to the end, and I think that's the most important thing, that we're not just there to convince them not to have an abortion. We're there to be a support service for them throughout their pregnancy, however they need it. If they need someone to be kind of like a big sister or a motherly figure, um, someone to help them get to their doctor's appointments, um, a place to go to get diapers, etc. It's a tough choice for a, for a woman, a girl or whatever, because uh, this girl who had the baby and said I was responsible for the baby, she, uh, her boyfriend says, you get the abortion, that's it, I have nothing to do with you. Her, I don't know if it was her boyfriend, but you know, she was troubled, she was down, her, you know, she was afraid to tell her parents. It was a, a, a complete, this poor girl was devastated, okay? Uh, and she went to uh, talk to Marianne, and, and Marianne, I guess, in the same things that you do, okay, mm -hmm. were able to talk her through what was going on and give her comfort. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what these poor girls need, mm -hmm. okay, because everyone dumps on them after they get pregnant, okay? Right. Uh, and that's sad. It's right. very sad. Folks, I'm talking to Jessica Frain, and uh, we'll be talking to Mar Maria Landu. And I met Maria uh, when she was passing out these bottles to help uh, for the Haven uh, for Women. Uh, well, the, if you want to uh, make a donation, the Haven for Women, you make a check out to them or call them at 459-5900. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the San Sancho, folks. 24-7 uh, SSP TV. You can watch any of our shows we produce. Uh, go to our new website, folks. It's fantastic. Uh, breaking news every day. Um, soon as it happens in the greater Hazleton area. Uh, plus all our shows uh, on uh, San Luis Sancho's, uh, our news, they're all archived, so you can watch them any, anytime, anywhere in the world. 24-7 SSPTV.com. Anyway, folks, Tomic and Mountain Spring Water, the official water of SSPTV and Samson Productions, the water that Starbucks uses. If you don't have it where you buy your water, Ask for Tomic and Mountain Spring Water. Uh, JoJo's on the Beltway sells this water. And of course, folks, yes, besides taking my omega-3s every day to stay strong and handsome and all that kind of stuff, I also take my Mona V, two shots of it. Dan Masala, my friend, is more than happy to tell you about this stuff. It's great stuff, folks. Um, they say the Acara, Kaya Berry, I don't know how to say it properly, but whatever it is, it's doing a great job. My guest today from the Haven for Women, uh, uh, Jessica Frain and Maria Landu. Uh, folks, it's a great cause. They're women who are pregnant or 
troubled or whatever, need help, if they have a baby, they're there to help you. Maria, I met you in church. Okay, yeah, what a yeah, place to meet you, you right? <laughs> now, tell me why you got involved with this. Uh, you're a counselor, okay? Yes. And uh, God bless you for doing such a great job. But you're in church. You talked about this particular bottle that you were giving out. But why do you, why do, you do what you do? Well, there's several reasons. Uh, but I know I have someone that was in my family who years ago uh, found out they were pregnant. And what happened was the father just told the daughter, because I well, got involved a little, and, and the person just, the father just told her, well, she's having an abortion. There's no other thing about it. And I just, like, looked at him, like, what? And the girl did not want to have an abortion. I mean, you know, she said, no, she don't want to have one, right? So, I, I mean, it's very frustrating. So what happened? When a parent, well, what happened? She kept the baby. She yeah, had the good baby. For good for her. And, and shame uh, on her father. Yeah, but a, a man stood by her. Yeah, good. And good. the man, and then what happened was, now he's 19 years old, well, graduated from high school. Mm. He's just a wonderful young man. Yeah. You know, uh, when you hear some of those stories, they're, they're very touching. And, and, you know, when you're involved with it every day, okay, and, and you see it, it's like a nurse who was working in a hospital uh, it's quick uh, or a, a LPN or anyone who's helping people, you know, sometimes some things go wrong and, and people are quick to criticize. But when you're there every day, seeing the person and working okay, cut them a break because you don't know what happened when you leave there. You may be visiting someone for 20 minutes or an hour. They are, they're there all the time giving health care. So you see it every day and it becomes, I don't know how you do it. Okay, it's it's it because you're dealing with human emotions. Everyone's a everyone's precious. Okay, mm -hmm. just like Pope John Paul said, you are called to work and pray against abortion. And there's millions and millions of abortions that are happening in this country, and they want to know why things are going wrong. Okay, yeah. the liberals are afraid to face it. Okay, uh, it's a shame. You have Obama. Okay, uh, Michelle Obama's partial birth abortion fundraiser. And she was for partial birth abortion. Okay, when you talk about yeah. I'm, uh, now it's like I'm picking on Obama. Well, you know, uh, Vice President Biden says you develop, you you judge a person on character. Well, here we go, folks. Okay, and uh, President Obama's health care is going to be providing for these kind of things. Okay, how, how do you react to that? You know what? I, this just kind of strikes a chord in me um, because doing the Haven is obviously not something that everyone can do. But when you speak of the healthcare industry, um, I can tell you personally that because I met someone and I encourage and I would just love to speak to everyone in the healthcare industry, if you have any type of contact with pregnant women and young, young women, you have an opportunity there to do exactly what we're doing because you're going to meet them firsthand. And contrary to what maybe you're, you're, the culture is telling you, that girl wants you to reach out in a, tr in a real way and help her. And I was 18 when I was pregnant with my son. Um, I, I had the, my son's father, his mother, everyone pressuring me to have an abortion. They told me if I didn't have an abortion, I would, he would break up with me. I would have no one. The, no one was going to love me. I, it was terrible what they put me through. And as a young girl, you know, that... I felt so much pressure, and I remember calling my doctor's office because I didn't know where else to go. There wasn't a pregnancy center near me. Um, but I called my doctor's office. It was a Saturday morning, and the nurse practitioner answered the phone, and she said, why don't you come in and, and see me, you know? And I went in, and I cried my eyes out, and I told my whole story and what my struggle of what I was going through. And she said, uh, she said to me, you know, you've told me everything that everyone wants you to do. What do you want to do? And I said, I want this baby. I mean, it's natural for a woman to, to want to protect their baby. That's a, a God-given instinct. And she said, well, you just answered your own question. And I needed that. You know, just to be there in a real way for women is what we try to do at the Haven. But you don't have to be at the Haven to do that, to help save lives. Just like you mentioned about, about doing the show. There's all different ways. Father uh, Frank Pavone said that it's not the politicians who are having abortions. And while it's important to be in, involved in politics, it's your next door neighbor that's having an abortion. So we all have a calling to help protect what, these unborn babies. What they don't see is the fact that this is a very difficult decision. There's no question about it. These girls, I mean, they're troubled, especially when they're forced. Uh, and that even be, it compounds the problem, okay? So the Haven for Women, people with well, your organizations, at least gives them some help and lets them realize that. But the thing is, what people don't know, we'll talk to um, uh, Teresa uh, well, coming back who had an abortion. What happens psychologically? What happens to the, your, your life after that and how everything just becomes, falls apart? Um, 
you know, we're all worried about materialistic things. We're all concerned about this and concerned about that. It's a very difficult decision, okay? Mm -hmm. People don't talk to me today because I have shows like this. They completely, if I'm in a restaurant and I know a pro, they'll ignore me uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm a pro-life person. Who are you to tell me what to do? And, That's a great you know, sign. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, well, yeah, they don't, you know, I saw a guy the other day and, you know, he completely ignored me, uh, you know, has a, has a manufacturing plant. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I talk, and you're always against the Democrats. I'm not against the Democrats. I'm, there are a lot of beautiful Democrats who support uh, pro-life. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends of mine. But it's the, the platform says, you know, we're for, and, and, and they're, they're about, I mean, they're, they force it down our throats. Um, Maria, you're doing a great job. Okay. I'm trying. And you, you, and do you, you want to hear another story? Yes, this I do. This is a wonderful story. Yeah. An acquaintance of mine. If it's going to get upset, I want you to. Oh, it won't okay. get upset. Are you sure? Okay. But an uh, acquaintance of mine, uh, when she was young, she got pregnant. She had unplanned pregnancy, and of course, nobody, I guess, you know, wanted to be involved in the pregnancy. But her parents stuck by her, so she gave the baby up for adoption because she had no way of feeding the baby or, you know, caring for it at that young age. So what happened was, 30 years later, she gets a call on the phone. And she answered the phone, and this person is looking for her birth mother. Well, this was the girl, this was the baby that she gave up for adoption 30 years ago. And now they have this extended family and oh, everybody's beautiful. so happy. And now she's a grandmother and she didn't know it. See that? So the good things happen. Uh, folks, I'm talking to Jessica Frame, who is the director of the Haven for Women, uh, and also uh, Maria Landu, who I saw in church, talking about this little bottle asking people to help. Uh, uh, believe me, uh, I'm sort of not a woman, but I, I have appeal. I, I really feel for those people who are in that situation, uh, but they have help, okay? And don't listen to anyone. Listen to your heart. That's the most important thing. We come back, we'll talk to a person who had an abortion and what she went through and, and um, how, how her family reacted to it. Um, stay with us. Welcome back to the San Luis Show. Folks, don't forget the Haven for Women when they need your support. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture right now, folks, okay? And uh, I'll give you just a, a picture is worth a zillion words as far as I'm concerned. The picture you're looking at right now is, is the uh, 21 Weeks uh, this is a uh, 21 weeks o operation on a child uh, in the wound who had spina uh, bifida uh, and it was a corrective surgery, uh, surgical procedure. And the uh, reporter for the USA Today took a picture and you could see the hand, a little baby's hand, holding the surgeon's finger. Okay, there's, there's now they say this is just a blur, but it's a, a, you know, it's a tissue. They abort people, uh, babies at 21 at this particular age, and even older. Um, just shows you how in the mother's womb there's a little baby holding her hand saying, you know, hanging on for life. Okay, now, Teresa um, Box, okay? Yes. Thanks for coming on the show, Teresa. You're welcome. Very Thank nice. you for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure. Okay, now you, uh, tell us your story. Okay, um, I grew up in a, um, a Catholic Christian family. Um, I lost my mom when I was 15. And I really had no direction um, after that. I had five older sisters, and they were involved in their own lives. Um, and I got in with the wrong crowd. Everybody around me, um, you know, when I got pregnant, they had already had abortion. Oh, we'll just take you to Planned Parenthood. Um, so I just went and had the abortion. Um, I went to Philadelphia. Uh, there was none, you know, the Scranton, you know, your pregnancy or your Planned Parenthoods just refer you to your clinics all over. And um, so I was in Philadelphia, and at that time, the shame was just so great that I didn't want anybody to know that I had had, had sex. Because back then, you just don't talk. In our family, you just never talked about it. So the, I never even thought about the baby, you know, until um, I was pregnant the second time. Um, I had met my husband, and um, we met in October, got married in May. Um, but he stood by me. The first man said he didn't want to have anything to do with me, and, you know, I was left alone. So um, I had Tommy, and once I had Tommy, I grieved terribly. I couldn't stop crying. Um, Tommy is now 31. I have a grandchild. I'm thankful that I did not abort Tommy because he could have been aborted also. Um, and there's a survivor's guilt that comes with that. I'm hoping and praying we could heal all that. Now I have um, three other children. Um, I thought God was punishing me because I couldn't have any children after Tommy. Um, 
and we went through a lot of healing. And thank God, you know, my husband and I went to a marriage encounter, found out he, you know, that's when I told him about my abortion because nobody could figure out why I was crying all the time. Um, got a lot of counseling, you know, got the help. Um, so it was just a, a beautiful time. But then started to um, pray to St. Anne and St. Gerard, and Elizabeth came along. But um, the, my other three children are miracles because they, um, my, my husband was told he could never father any more children. And then we have Elizabeth, Matthew, and Joseph. So, but when I went through my Rachel's Vineyard retreat, I believe that I aborted twins um, when I was 20. So I have um, Annie and Robert, and Jamie, I had a miscarriage in between Elizabeth and Matthew. So, um, you know, I have really seven children, three in heaven and four down here. What do you say to women, girls, who have had abortions? And after that, it's like, boy, did I make a mistake. And, and, yeah. and now they're suffering. I mean, and it's here again, we're all human beings, and I'm not... Yeah. You know, you just pray for those people, hope that, that they can get along and, and understand and be a, t a tool like you are. Because right. sometimes God puts people on this earth to, yes. you, know, um, you know, to teach other people. You know, you see people who are crippled, that means you should be appreciative that yes. you, you know, there's lessons to be learned in life, okay? What do you tell these women and girls? You who just are? love them um, and give them all the help. I wish I had a New Haven Pregnancy Center when I was there. You know, there's so many of them now, you know, around. Um, and this is what we need, is just what New Haven gives. Um, you know, counseling, because at that point I didn't know what sexuality was, you know, human sexuality, you're going through so many changes. Um, when I lost my mom, I didn't know um, really anything about sex, you know? So I just went right into the culture. So um, these women need guidance, and we need to know that um, we have to respect our own bodies and love ourselves, and we just need to love them into life. Um, and give them that help. You know, uh, Jessica, sometimes when you're free-spirited and you, you know, you're young and you're you know, enjoying yourself, oh. you don't even think about those things mm -hmm. and because you're just saying, ah, it's okay. And that's after, you know, well, some, a lot of women have, uh, especially girls who get pregnant and, you know, when they're so-called boyfriends, whoever, just say, look, I want nothing to do with yeah, you. And, 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 and then that, and that's so painful because, you know, it just, it's sad. What the Haven for Women, what you're doing, okay, just to reiterate for people who may have tuned in, okay, the Haven for Women folks, incidentally, the phone number is 459-5900. Their website is havenforwomen.org. Um, they could certainly, certainly use your help. Uh, Maria Landu was in church with these little bottles saying, fill them up with change and just to help people who are in crisis. And here's a testimony from Teresa who said, if there was a haven for women, she probably maybe would not have had that abortion. There's 50% of women that go to these crisis centers that decide after they really see they got comfort, uh, they decide to have that precious uh, God-giving child. Uh, what does it haven for women do? we got about a minute and a half left. Well, um, we offer free pregnancy testing, counseling on all uh, the options uh, for when you're pregnant, including um, parenting, adoption, and abortion. So you get education on all those. Education educational information on STDs, on abstinence, chastity. Um, that's basically it. We also offer referrals. Uh, we can, if there's a girl who's pregnant and needs help finding a job, uh, maternity housing, basically any obstacle that you would encounter in a crisis pregnancy when you're alone, we have either the help, the help directly there or referrals to get the help, so. And certainly you, you, uh, you, need, you need some funding to help these people, especially if they have children right. and need we have, yeah, we have a thrift store on site which offers uh, used baby items, clothing up to size 4T, so you can come and shop in the store or you could donate items to the store. That's one way to help. And then you can also call us. We have fundraising ideas that you could take to your church or school. Good. So. Good. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Maria, Thanks for having thank us. thank you for coming on the show. You're a great person. Uh, keep up the good work. Um, and uh, certainly, Teresa... Yeah. for coming on and, and telling people yes, your story. And if there is anybody out there, um, just you can get on the website, rachelsvineyard.org. Um, that's a healing, a weekend healing retreat, that people yeah. go to for a retreat. And um, I help facilitate them now. And there's such sad stories out there that they need. Yeah, yeah. don't let the Tell shame you. hold you from Absolutely. your Absolutely. Just the fact that you're here telling the story, okay, uh, is, is a healing process, yes. okay? Yes. Uh, folks, uh, Haven for Women, uh, they need your help. Uh, they help a lot of people. And folks, uh, uh, once again, as uh, I've given Planned Parenthood every opportunity to come on the show, and I'll just say here they are. They could talk for 29 minutes and tell everyone why you should, uh, why they, what they do, and, and the abortions, and why they're great, and 
join Obama and he'll tell you the same thing and uh, is now telling everyone to have a conscience. Well, we have a conscience, uh, Mr. Obama. We, we don't want to kill babies. Uh, that's, that's, that's my conscience anyway. We'll see you next time.